When you write an application, how much of the code did you actually write? It's most likely only about 10% and that may seem odd, but let's think about it. Almost every file in your source code will start with using or import. That is practically you telling the application, hey, use this code that somebody else wrote that I have no control over. And that's fine. That's how we are able to write the applications that we write today, these huge ones. But it also introduces a risk. What if that library that you include has a vulnerability? Well, you're going to be the one that's going to get into trouble. Today, I'm going to show you the shift left way of managing open source vulnerabilities. Let's run a shift left scan on a repository on some code of mine. So I have an application here that is very, very, very vulnerable. Let's scan it. And for this, I'm going to use the command line tool. So the sl.exe tool that you can download. We are going to say, okay, I want to analyze something. And uh, this application, I'm going to name it JVL. And then I'm going to supply the OSS project directory, which is this directory. And then with dash dash Java, I can supply a jar or war file that I want to scan. So when you do that, when you run that, you will see that the goes through a couple of steps and then it gives you an, a URL that you can visit. That's going to link to your dashboard to your scan. So if we go to that URL and we check out our scan, we see that sadly we have five OSS. So open source vulnerabilities. That is five more than you want to have in your application, obviously. But luckily when looking through these, uh, I find that four of these are not reachable uh, in our code. Now, however, one of these, the hibernate one is sadly reachable in our code. Now, what can we see of this vulnerability? So we see the CVE of it and the CVSS uh, score. Then we get a description. So a flaw was found in hibernate score and hibernate is kind of a, a really simply put a way for object oriented objects to go in databases um, in a really simple way. But an issue was found in a version there and we are using a vulnerable version. That's an issue obviously. And, but what's more, more dangerous here is the fact that it is reachable in our code. So we can see that they're reachable in one findings. So what does that mean? That means that user input is actually interacting with this, um, this vulnerability. So that means that most likely the vulnerability is actually exploitable in this case. So that's way more dangerous than the other cases where we had a vulnerable version, but user input was not interacting with the library that is vulnerable. However, luckily we also get some suggestions here. So some suggested mitigations, one of which is obviously to upgrade. That's probably the best way because always upgrades, always uh, download patches from your providers from the of the libraries that you're using. And another one is obviously also to uh, mitigate the vulnerability below and to eliminate the reachability. So make sure that uh, user uh, input cannot go to your vulnerable library. Ho however, obviously an upgrade to just remove the vulnerability altogether would be the best. Now, how does all of this work? What happens? So first of all, obviously we need to get a list of all of the, the libraries, all of the packages that are being used in our application. And that's simple, that, that can be done. And, and then we query that whole list against a list of vulnerabilities and we see, okay, this version is vulnerable and we are using this version. So that's an issue. However, shift left here goes further. So what it does it is for every vulnerable package, it looks, it's, and, it's, and it looks at, is this package actually being loaded in our application? If that is the case, then obviously we have a bigger issue because if, if a package isn't being loaded in the application, that might not be as big of an issue. Um, but when it's being loaded, it's then going to look at, is this package actually being used? So are we interacting with it and using it? If that is the case, and this is where the real power comes in, then it's going to look at the attacker reachability. Now, what is the attacker reachability? Like I said, it maps the user input and tracks it down your code. So it's going to see, okay, user input comes there from post data, for example, it is being decoded. This is being done to it. This is being done to it. And eventually it's being used in this function that is of this vulnerable library. 
So it really tracks uh, the, the, the flow of your, of your user input and sees is that being used by that vulnerable library. And if that is the case, then you obviously have a very big issue uh, and you should really solve that. But how are you going to fix that? And that's where the last step comes into play here. It is also going to provide you with some suggestions for fixing the issue. So most, most of the times that's going to be um, to update the package. But in some cases that might not be possible. For example, you might really need that version of that package. And even though it, it's not best practice, it, it might be an accepted risk for you. Well, in that case, you need to ensure that it's obviously not uh, attacker reachable. And, and so these, these suggestions are really helpful. And in this way, you can kind of mitigate OSS vulnerabilities in your code base. So that was this video about the shift left scanner. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll hope to see you back for another video.